Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Over the last one week, we've had a number of articles released about the COVID-19 situation in Africa and their extremely low numbers. I want to go over one particular article with you that was on AP News. Scientists mystified as Africa avoids COVID disaster. COVID-19 is gone. When did you last hear of anyone who has died of COVID-19? Said somebody in Zimbabwe. The mask is to protect my pocket. The police demand bribes, so I lose money if I don't move around with a mask. Earlier this week, Zimbabwe recorded just 33 new cases of COVID-19 and zero deaths, in line with a recent fall in the disease across the continent, where WHO data show that infections have been dropping since July. Those are stunningly low numbers for Zimbabwe, with a population approaching 15 million people. When the coronavirus first emerged last year, health officials feared the pandemic would sweep across Africa, killing millions. Although it's still unclear what COVID-19's ultimate toll will be, that catastrophic scenario has yet to materialize in Zimbabwe or much of the continent. Scientists emphasize that obtaining accurate COVID-19 data, particularly in African countries with patchy surveillance, is extremely difficult and warn that declining coronavirus trends could easily be reversed. That's a good last point with COVID-19 because it has shown the capacity to frequently surprise people. I always have the rule that whatever you hear, always wait for about three months and see if it's still the same when it comes to COVID-19. Often it isn't. But there is something mysterious going on in Africa that is puzzling scientists, said the chair of global health at Columbia University. Africa doesn't have the vaccines and the resources to fight COVID-19 that they have in Europe and the US, but somehow they seem to be doing better. Fewer than 6% of people in Africa are vaccinated. For months, the WHO has described Africa as one of the least affected regions in the world in its weekly pandemic reports. That number of 6% is absolutely stunning when you compare it to Western countries. Fewer than 6% of people in Africa are fully vaccinated. Some researchers say the continent's younger population, the average age is 20 versus about 43 in Western Europe, in addition to their lower rates of urbanization and tendency to spend time outdoors, may have spared it the more lethal effects of the virus so far. Several studies are probing whether there might be other explanations including genetic reasons or past infection with parasitic diseases. That last point about past exposures to pathogens is a very interesting one. I've heard other people in medicine and science mention the same thing with regards to exposures in many regions of the world, including Africa and Asia. On Friday, researchers working in Uganda said they found COVID-19 patients with high rates of exposure to malaria were less likely to suffer severe disease or death than people with little history of the disease. And then there's a suggestion here that past infection with malaria could blunt the tendency of people's immune systems to go into overdrive when they are infected with COVID-19. The research was presented at a meeting of the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. How about the policies within these African countries? There's an interesting statement here that the Chair of Global Public Health at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland said African leaders haven't gotten the credit they deserve for acting quickly, citing Mali's decision to close its borders before COVID-19 even arrived. I think there's a different cultural approach in Africa where these countries have approached COVID with a sense of humility because they've experienced things like Ebola, polio and malaria. That's a really important point to remember as well, that many of these African countries are unfortunately used to dealing with terrible infectious diseases all the time. In past months, the coronavirus has pummeled South Africa and is estimated to have killed more than 89,000 people there, by far the most deaths on the continent. But for now, African authorities, while acknowledging that there could be gaps, are not reporting huge numbers of unexpected fatalities that might be COVID-related. WHO data show that deaths in Africa make up just 3% of the global total. In comparison, deaths in the Americas and Europe account for 46% and 29% respectively. Again, those are stunning differences in how Africa has been affected by COVID-19 compared to Europe and America. In Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, the government has recorded nearly 3,000 deaths so far among its 200 million population. The US records that many deaths every two or three days. Again, that is a staggering statistic there for Nigeria, population 200 million. The low numbers have Nigerians feeling relieved. They said there will be dead bodies on the streets and all that, but nothing like that happened. 
On Friday, Nigerian authorities began a campaign to significantly expand the West African nation's coronavirus immunization. Officials are aiming to inoculate half the population before February, a target they think will help them achieve herd immunity. A Nigerian virologist who sits on several WHO advisory groups suggested Africa might not even need as many vaccines as the West. It's an idea that, while controversial, he says, is being seriously discussed among African scientists and is reminiscent of the proposal British officials made last March to let COVID-19 freely infect the population to build up immunity. I remember well that initial proposal from the United Kingdom that was quickly abandoned back in the spring of 2020. That doesn't, however, mean that vaccines aren't needed in Africa. We need to be vaccinating all out to prepare for the next wave said an epidemiologist in South Africa who previously advised the government on COVID-19. Look at what's happening in Europe. The likelihood of more cases spilling over here is very high. The impact of the coronavirus has also been relatively muted beyond Africa in poor countries like Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, someone said he hadn't seen anyone wearing a mask in months, including at a recent wedding he attended alongside hundreds of guests. In his university classes, more than 20 students routinely sit unmasked in close quarters. I haven't seen any cases of corona lately. So far, Afghanistan has recorded about 7,200 deaths among its 39 million people, although little testing was done amid the conflict and the actual numbers of cases and deaths are unknown. Back in Zimbabwe, doctors were grateful for the respite from COVID-19, but feared it was only temporary. People should remain very vigilant. Complacency is what is going to destroy us because we may be caught unaware. So that is an extremely interesting article. The link is down below. I encourage you all to read it. So what's behind these very low numbers on the continent of Africa? I was thinking about this myself and came up with three different hypotheses, theories on why this could be the case. Number one, age. As was touched on in the article, African populations have a much lower average age compared to many Western countries. And this is actually also a bad thing because if you look at statistics in Africa, many African countries, their average life expectancy is really shocking indeed. In some countries, it's only in the 40s and 50s. So obviously, if you don't have these extremes of age, which by far is the biggest risk factor for getting seriously ill from COVID-19, you're going to avoid a lot of the deaths from COVID-19. Number two, other comorbidities. Again, one of the biggest risk factors for getting seriously ill from COVID-19 are coexisting conditions, including obesity. If you take another common illness which is associated with severe COVID-19, like diabetes, in the West, many of these are lifestyle conditions directly affecting metabolic and immune health. So Africa as a continent in most countries have lower rates of many of these lifestyle related diseases, including obesity and diabetes. And number three, testing. I can't emphasize this point enough. The article touched upon it, but in most parts of Africa and many other parts of the world, I'm even thinking rural India, they simply don't have the desire, drive or resources to test for mild cases, especially of COVID-19. I was speaking to somebody the other day, this is obviously in the United States, and I think there was some sort of travel issue and they had some mild symptoms of COVID-19. They ended up being tested four or five times in the space of one week. I think if we told lots of people that in poorer countries, they would laugh at the idea because they simply can't imagine these tests being available so easily. So I am sure that in most parts of Africa and many other parts of the world, the testing capabilities of COVID-19 are not even a fraction of what we have in Western countries. If people have mild symptoms like a sore throat or congestion, they will simply recover at home. They are not going to get tested and therefore the data is not going to be recorded for the countries. Can you think of any other reasons here? I can imagine some people are going to comment on vitamin D, ivermectin, etc. But I wanted to focus on those three main reasons that I thought of for Africa's extremely low COVID case count and how many people have been badly affected by the illness. This sort of question is exactly what medicine and science is all about. Debating issues openly, trying to think of the reasons why we see certain patterns and keeping an open mind. 
Unfortunately, as I've said many times before, there are many people, some of which have infiltrated my own profession, who are the complete opposite. They get very angry and agitated if you ask questions. How dare you ask a question? That's not what this is about. I am the science. These people are a terrible stain on my profession, and to be honest, it's an embarrassment for me as a member of the medical profession that some of these people are out there. But that is unfortunately what we're dealing with right now in 2021 as things stand. But I want to encourage open debate about very important questions such as this Africa issue. If you have a whole continent which has avoided the scourge of COVID-19, there must be reasons why, and that should absolutely be debated. As one of the greatest individuals in world history said, the famous ancient Greek philosopher Socrates, wisest is the person who knows that they know nothing. You have to have humility, you have to keep an open mind when you're thinking complicated problems through. So anyway, let me know again what your thoughts are. I hope you all, for those of you in the United States, have a great Thanksgiving. I'm one of the doctors that always volunteers to work on Thanksgiving, so I'm going to be busy for the next few days in the hospital. And I do that, of course, with a selfish reason in mind. I always do it in exchange for having Christmas off. And a lot of Americans don't realize this, but people from outside the country basically have little clue about what Thanksgiving is. I hardly knew what it was or had heard of it until I arrived on these shores. And while we're on the subject of Thanksgiving, I want to leave you with one other thought as well. We're all going to have an abundance of food tomorrow, but throughout human history, disease and famine has gone hand in hand. And there are some truly shocking statistics on how much famine has spread to many of the regions in the world, some of which in Africa, the continent that I have just talked about. Famine has skyrocketed across many countries. And while we in the West are blessed, most of us, to not have to worry about where our next meal is coming from, many people in the world, hundreds of millions, are not as fortunate. Getting food is a struggle. So those of us in the West, who I presume are most people watching right now in wealthier countries, thank our lucky stars, thank the higher being above that we have food on our plates. Of course, we have the opposite problem. We have too much food, but far better than being malnourished and not having enough food and starving. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your day tomorrow. We'll speak again next time.